Hey guys, in our last videos, we took a closer look at the initiatives that are being implemented alongside the LA River to see it revitalized. However, there is still a lot to be done to see the LA River fully restored. Today, we're going to look at the main limitations and challenges that LA faces to make this enterprise successful. So, where were we? Well, you were telling me about how cracking the concrete was a controversial subject. Yeah, now we're gonna crack that concrete. It's definitely possible and we're gonna do it. Well, I'd like to see the concrete gone, you know? Who would? That it will be difficult to take out much of any of the concrete. Of course it's possible. <laughs> we just have to, uh, we have to wanna do it. We're never gonna get rid of all the concrete. It's just technically not going to be feasible. The reality is we, if we wanted to remove all the concrete, it's doable. Oh yeah, well this example shows that there's a multitude of stakeholders advocating for the river, but not one entity is a decision maker. Just like in a democracy, you know? Exactly. If such a process guarantees stabilities, it also slows the development of the project. Our governance and the agencies that control the river right now are not equipped to um, create the change that we want to see. Just to get this bridge built, we crossed, I forget how many rail lines, water lines, sewer lines, gas lines, the Army Corps, the federal government, there's the county of Los Angeles, there's the city of Los Angeles, there's the state of California who regulates aspects of the river. So it's a big political lift to try to put a single actor in charge. Wow. That's a lot of people. Um, the thing about the river is, yes, it's very complex and there are many entities involved that have various jurisdictions um, and governance, if you will, over different pieces. A and it is a very large puzzle. It's a place where it has always been difficult to advance a kind of collective idea that brings to bear neighborhood, uh, city, county, state and federal uh, priorities and the river is actually an almost perfect emblem of how governance works in Los Angeles for that. Would it be easier if it were under one umbrella? Yes, um, but it would also be a lot to take on for one sole entity. I mean, no one person, no one group, no ten groups are going to get that done. That has to be a collective effort. Anyone who wants to work on the river we embrace Let's work together, there's plenty of work to do. If we're gonna actually be able to revitalize these 51 miles and actually make it a community benefit and not do it the wrong way, it's gonna take all of us. But with so many people and agencies involved, how do they manage to all agree? Well, unfortunately, they don't always agree. Opinions diverge and each entity has a different approach, vision, and priorities around the river. There will be competing dreams, and we have to be ready for that notion that there will be competing ideas of what this landscape means and should mean. There's a lot of narratives, and they're competing. They're not necessarily working together. There can't be all winners, right? What do you mean we can't all be winners? I thought the whole idea behind the river was to reconnect everybody. Well, that's what happens in the real world. And there's a risk for an infrastructure that is not adapted to people's needs, which can open the door to gentrification. So the issue of gentrification is, of course, a big concern for the city. Of course, income inequality, you know, nationally has, has grown, you know, dramatically over the last few decades. So I, I think we see that here as well. Make this body of water nicer, greener, flowers, so on. The value of the real estate next door is going to be skyrocketing. Two years from now, this little strip mall is going to be demolished and they're probably going to put another Starbucks. Here, redevelopment and anything that's improved is at our expense. So rising property values, you know, displacing old, vulnerable communities, mostly minority communities, communities of color, people who don't have the economic means, um, are, are starting to see the revitalization, the Restoration River, not as a benefit to them, but as a benefit to other people who can afford to live in these, you know, higher cost neighborhoods. Because I could see how fast this is going to go downhill and the river basically is going to be privatized. As a result of some um, a revitalization and some projects that have been built, a gentrification has taken place. Small businesses have closed. People have lost their homes. The, the character of their neighborhood has changed. 
Well, that's it for this series about the LA River, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. As you must have realized, this is a very complex subject, and we tried to cover all the main essential points that we thought were interesting and important to talk about. However, if you have more questions and want more information, don't hesitate to contact us. And to finish on a more hopeful tone, we asked all the people we interviewed to describe the LA River in three words. And this is what they said. Precious. Opportunity. Connectivity. Natural. Resource. Underused. Urban link. Hope. Life. It divides us. Crossroads of LA. Rebirth. It unites us. Diversity. Flowing. Unparalleled. Coexist. La madre tierra. Community. Accessible. And us. The river is us. I don't know what else to say.